welcome uh, now we shall be learning about another type of separation processes used in the natural gas industries that is the membrane separation in this particular lecture we shall be learning about the application of the membrane separation in natural gas systems then the different types of membrane operations the applicability of the membrane operation we shall look into its advantages these advantages then membrane properties and the types of membrane used in the natural gas systems then mechanism of membrane gas separation and the different types of membrane modules that may be used for the natural gas systems these are the just some overviews of uh, membrane systems the detailed uh, lectures will not be given in this particular thing so here we have some applications of the membrane separation for the natural gas processing one is the dehydration of natural gas then acid gas removal like carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide and then we have the removal of nitrogen first let us define what is a membrane a membrane is a semi permeable or what is called a perm selective barrier that allows the selective permeation of certain species through it now perm selective comes from two words permeation plus selective that means what a membrane does that it allows some of the components to pass through it and it does not allow some of the components to pass through it that is how it is able to effect separation so this membrane separation is used both for liquid separation and gas separation and we are using the membrane separation at our household application like in the water uh, purification we use at our home and here we you might have heard some of these uh, names like microfiltration ultrafiltration reverse osmosis etc which are used in the water purification at our home but we shall not be talking about liquid separation by membrane we shall be focusing on only the gas separation now let us look at a typical membrane configuration in the membrane configuration we have three streams one is the feed the feed is separated into a retentate that means the part of the total feed mixture that is retained by the membrane and another is the permeate and this is that part of the feed that goes through the membrane then here is a pictorial representation of the configuration here we find we have the feed which is going coming here and the feed is represented by um, uh, these circles of various colors and we find the feed when it passes over the membrane some of this permeates through and here in this case we find that this blue color balls are coming through and in between we have some other golden color balls that means this permeate is primarily the one of the components and rest of the components are passing over the membrane and this is coming out and this is called a retentate that is the fraction which is retained by the membrane so this is a typical representation of the membrane configuration next we come to the applicability and let us look into the advantages and disadvantages here we have the membrane is advantage is that it is quite lightweight because these come in modular construction we have small small modules of the membranes and we have large turn down ratio that is we the ratio of the maximum to the minimum capacity and this also is because that uh, when we want to increase the capacity we may increase the number of modules and then the cost and the maintenance are also quite low so there that way we find that the membrane gives some advantage for the cost reduction on the other hand it has some disadvantages and these are that it proves expensive if we need some multi staging that is we need several modules and we need to recycle we shall look into this kind of configurations later but if you are going for multi staging or recycling the cost increases the membranes are prone to mechanical and thermal damages at high pressure and high temperatures and they are also prone to fouling fouling means the deposition on some unwanted uh, products on the membrane surface and if the fouling occurs what will happen that the the, uh, the feed the permeate or the 
uh, various types of the molecules will not be able to pass through the membrane properly and resistance to the separation will increase and that will decrease the efficiency of separation. So, membranes are prone to fouling and deposition of particulate matters and if there are particulate matters in the membrane then these particulates need to be separated by some pretreatment method before sending the feed on the membrane surface. For natural gas systems, it is found that some of the methane also passes because when we talk of dehydration, we want the water to pass through the membrane whereas, the methane should not be passing through, but we find that some of the methane also goes through the membrane and that way what we find that we are losing some of the methane from the natural gas during the dehydration of natural gas by membrane and this makes it a non-competitive with respect to the absorption process. Now, there are various ways of classifying the membrane. We have porous membrane and non-porous membranes. Porous membranes are used when the molecular size is more and non-porous are used when the molecular sizes are less and porous membranes are used for the liquid separation and the non-porous for gas separation. We shall be looking into only the gas separation that is the non-porous type of membranes. And when we say non-porous, what it means is that we have different we have pores, but these pores are non-detectable by the limits of the electron microscopy. So, it is not totally uh, non-porous, but we have the pore sizes are very very small. So, these are some of the desirable properties of the membrane. One is that it should have good permeability and if it has good permeability, it means the mass flux will be high, then it should be selective that means, it should be selectively permeating permitting some of the solutes to pass through it, so that we get the separation and then it should be defect free. That means, there should not be any kind of pinhole in the membrane and there should not be any distortion, so that we can retain the same efficacy of separation throughout the membrane module. Then we have high stability. The stability comes with respect to chemical, mechanical and thermal stability. Chemical means it should not get dissolved or it should not react with any of the components. Mechanical means it should be able to withstand the high pressure difference that occurs across the membrane surface and thermal means it should not get damaged by any high temperature. Then we have low fouling tendency that means it should not be retaining any of the uh, waste matters or fouling matters on it. Then uh, it should have reasonable useful life. Then also it should be easy to fabricate because if we have ease of fabrication then we can make a very compact module which would be economic and we can also at the same time have high surface area per unit volume of the membrane. And lastly we have the amenability to packaging that means we should be able to package the whole module easily. Now, let us come to the membrane which is used for the gas separation and in this we have the asymmetric membranes. What is asymmetric? It means that we have a ultra thin, it is about 0.1 to 1 micron thick high performance membrane and this particular ultra thin membrane is called the skin on a much thicker and highly porous. Highly porous means 100 to 200 microns support. That means, if I have the only the skin the skin will not be having enough mechanical stability, it may buckle. So, to prevent this buckling of the thin membrane, the skin, what we need? We need a support and the support is made quite thick, but we want that the support should not be offering any kind of resistance to the permeation of the solute. So, that is why the pore size of the supports are much bigger in comparison to the pore sizes of the skin. So, this pore and that is how we are trying to ensure that the supports are not giving any kind of resistance to the mass transfer. So, we have the thin skin that is supported by a thick support and that is why it is called asymmetric membrane. Now, the support should not be offering the resistance to flow and the flux, flux is controlled by the membrane surface. So, here is a typical configuration of the asymmetric membrane. Here we find that we have a porous support on which we are supporting the skin layer and here we are showing that how the supports here we are showing the skin is almost there is no pores 
and with comparison to the skin we have that big pores of the support system. So, that means the rate of uh, permeation is dictated by the skin and not by the support. So, in case of natural gas separation we use polymeric membranes and here we are showing some of the polymeric membranes polyimide for carbon dioxide removal then cellulose acetate, uh, perfluoropolymer, silicone rubber and polysulfone and here we have shown the various applications of these membranes in the natural gas processing. Now, let us look into the mechanism of separation through these non-porous membranes. The mechanism is called solution diffusion mechanism and in this the by solution we means the gas will be dissolving at the high pressure upstream. This dissolution is basically a process of adsorption. It is not by dissolving the way sugar dissolves in water not that way, but it is basically a, an adsorption process. So, that is because dissolution that so the gas has to be first dissolve has to dissolve on the upstream side uh, and on the upstream side we have a high pressure on the downstream side we have a low pressure and this pressure difference across the membrane surface is the driving force for the uh, solute movement. So, after dissolution of the gas on the upstream side which is at high pressure then the gas will diffuse through the membrane and after reaching the permeate side it has to get dissolved from the downstream low pressure side of the membrane. And here we show pictorially the whole mechanism that the feed is coming we have two separate uh, colored balls to show the mixture and this feed is coming and then some of these balls are getting absorbed or dissolved on the upstream side and then they are diffusing through the membrane and ultimately when they reach the permeate side they get dis uh, dissolved here and we find in this case the gray colored balls this are the coming on the more on the permeate side whereas the dark colored balls are coming re being retained on the feed side and some of them are also permeating through the membrane. So, that is how we are able to uh, separate a gas by this, uh, by this solution diffusion mechanism. Now, here we have to find out the overall flux of the particular solute we have to consider the rate of dissolution in the membrane and rate of permeation. So, this is how we are getting rate of dissolution we are using Henry's law in which we have this C A equal to S A P A C A is defined as the equilibrium solubility of species A in the membrane S is the solubility constant for species A membrane pair and P is the partial pressure of species A in the gas on the permeate side the, uh, on the sorry on the feed side please understand this that this S A depends on the pairing of the species and the membrane that means for different pairs of the species and the membrane we shall be having different values of the S A. It is something what we have learned in case of adsorption that in adsorption also the uh, rate of adsorption depends on the solute adsorbent pair. So, here we have the e expression to find out the rate of permeation in which we are finding the driving force is the difference in the partial pressure of the species A and 1 and 2 represent the feed side and the permeate side respectively. As long as the feed side partial pressure is more than the feed partial pressure on the permeate side we shall be having this particular solute transfer. Please understand this the, uh, the, uh, the driving force is not the total pressure, but the partial pressure of the particular component. And L m is the thickness of the membrane whereas, P is the permeability and D is the diffusivity which is used to calculate the permeability of the species through the membrane. Now, if we put this particular equation in electrical analogy we find J A corresponds to the current this uh, difference in the partial pressures corresponds to the voltage then in that case L m by P A will represent the resistance of uh, to the mass flux of the particular species through the membrane. The unit of permeability is 
barrier and the barrier is defined like this that it is 10 to the minus 10 cubic centimeter STP centimeter this centimeter represents the thickness of the membrane then square centimeter of the membrane surface then this is the pressure partial pressure in terms of centimeter of mercury and this is per second. So, this is how the barrier is defined. Now, we have the separation factor which represents it is something analogous to the relative volatility it determines the extent to which the feet can be separated and is defined for a single stage operation for a pair of components A and B denoted by alpha A B it is defined as the ratio of the composition of A C A and the composition B C B in the permeate relative to the same ratio on the feed side on the retentate side and here we have the definition of alpha A B that C A by C B on the permeate side to C A by C B on the retentate side this is how we define the separation factor and it depends on the flow pattern of the in the module about which we shall see a bit later and then the ideal separation factor that is alpha a b star which is defined as the ratio of the permeabilities and here it is alpha a b star is equal to the uh, permeate permeability of component a to permeability component b. So, we can see that alpha b a will be the alpha b a star will be the inverse of alpha a b star and the driving force of the mass transfer through the membrane that is the delta partial pressure and the cut the cut is defined as the mole of a particular species in the permeate to the mole of the same particular species in the retentate. So, here we have different types of membrane modules and we are talking about the typical membrane modules which are used for the natural gas systems in this case we have two types of membrane modules. So, first is a spirally wound and as a hollow fiber for the spirally wound it looks like that that we have some sheets of the membrane and the sheets are separated by some this uh, spacers and these sheets are then wound like a cylinder and we find that on one side of the uh, membrane we have the feed flow and between the membrane and the spacer we have the permeate flow. So, here we have that means we have a bunch of these pairs of the membranes separated by the spacers and that is how we are able to make a very compact module in a spiral form. So, this is the spirally wound co configuration next we have the hollow fiber membrane module in this case it is something like the uh, shell and tube heat exchanger in which the membrane comes in terms of the fiber or what we call lumen and in this case we find that on the one side the feed enters then it goes through each of the fibers and then all the permeates are collected from one side and on the other side we have the retentate which is going from the other side of the module. So, this is the overall configuration of the hollow fiber membrane module. After the membrane modules let us look into the various flow patterns possible in these modules. First we have the co current flow then we have counter current flow and we have the cross flow. So, go let us go one by one in this co current flow we find that feed enters at one place and it is decided based on the direction in which the permeate flow. So, in this case we find that feed and the permeate are moving on the, the same direction. So, that the retentate and permeate are taken out from the same side and this green represents the membrane. Going to the counter current flow we have this pattern that this retentate is taken from one side and the permeate is flowing counter current to that. So, the to the opposite sides of the membrane we are getting the retentate and the permeate whereas, in the cross flow we find this kind of flow pattern that the feed it goes above the membrane and then the permeate is coming at the cross that is at 90 degree from the uh, membrane. So, that is how we are getting a cross flow. Now, we for a membrane cascade what we cascade means that we are putting several membrane modules 
in series or parallel so that we can get a higher separation and in this case there could be a recycle in between the various modules. So, here we have one two stage uh, stripping cascade this is used for uh, getting purer retentate. How? We find that the feed goes to the first membrane module here and the retentate is taken to the second module and then and then is getting the purer module. That means, this retentate and this retentate will be having different compositions whereas, the permeate is left free only thing may be that the permeate from the second module may be recycled to the first module to take out some more retentate. Then we have a two stage um, uh, cascade for the purer component. In this case we find that what we are doing uh, purer permeate. So, what we are doing that we are now taking the permeate from the first module and taking it as a feed to a second module to get a purer permeate whereas, retentate is taken from the second module and is fed back and mixed with the feed to send it back to the first module and that is how we are trying to get a purer permeate. And if we want both purer retentate and permeate like distillation column, we are what we are doing that we are putting the feed somewhere in between and on the one side we are taking the retentate and putting it through the several modules and this we can say that this is equivalent to the stripping section and on the other end we take the permeate and this permeate is somewhat recycled and it is taken to the, 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 the next uh, module on this on this side and this way we are finding that the permeate from the uh, previous module is taken to the uh, feed. So, we find that this way we are able to get purer and purer permeate. So, this we can say this is something like an enriching section. So, this is how we are able to get a purer permeate and a purer retentate. Now, these are the references which you may consider for further detail on the membrane. Thank you.